Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS statistics tutorial video. And in this video, I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about something called the kernel density estimator, right? The kernel density estimate or estimator, or you'll sometimes see it KDE. And so this is kind of a fancy term for simply saying, or for, for a way of answering the, the following question, right? KDEs answer the following question, right? Given a set of points what is the probability of finding a point at a new location. Okay, so let's take a look at the, what this sort of sentence here means graphically, right? So you can imagine just like we've done before, right? We have some study area Okay, we have some study area, and inside of this study area, we have a bunch of known points, right? Just sort of randomly scattered throughout here, right? These red points, right? These are our, our known locations, right? These are our known points, okay? And so what... Um, what a kernel density estimator does, or a KDE will do, right, is it will say, right, it will say, what is the probability, right, what is the probability it's going to answer the question. It's going to answer the question. What is the probability of a point at this location? Right. And you can imagine this would be incredibly useful from a sampling perspective, right? Let's imagine again, I like to talk about trees, that you had somebody went out and sampled a bunch of tree crowns and you're confident in their sampling protocol, but you know because it's a sample that they didn't get all the tree crowns. Well, you might wanna ask yourself, okay, well, what is the likelihood that I would find a tree crown in this location that they didn't sample? Right? A kernel density estimator would answer that question for you, right? It would say there's, you know, so such and such density at this point, which would be an interpretation of, you know, what is the likelihood that I will find a tree here? So this that's sort of the role that, that kernel density estimators play, or the kernel density estimate plays. So let's talk about two things, two key components of the kernel density. All right, we're going to talk about an example of a specific kernel, um, but in general, right, two key components of KDE, right? Two key components of a kernel density estimator. One is going to be what's called the radius or bandwidth. Right, and so the radius this is going to be sort of your, I'm going to use the term area of influence. This is going to be your area of influence. Right, this is going to basically say, given this unknown location that I care about, right, how much influence is this point down here going to have? Is it going to have a lot of influence or are we going to basically consider this point non-existent? 
right, relative to this point here, which is a little bit closer, right? So the radius or bandwidth basically is saying, you know, given this point that we're interested in calculating, how much do we care about points the farther away that they are? So that's what that's the first key component. The second key component is the distance. Right. Now, when I say distance here, what I'm talking about is pretty much regardless of what actual kernel you use. And again, we're going to there, there are many different kinds of kernels. We're going to go through a specific one um, in the next video. But there are many different kernels. But what they all have in common is this idea of an area of influence and this idea of distance. And what distance is, in this case, is literally just its Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance from unknown point to known points, right? And so that, again, that would be, for example, you know, it would be this distance right here. How far, how far is this from this, right? It's going to be this distance here. How far is that from that? And just to sort of recap the idea of Euclidean distance, and I know you've probably seen this equation before, right? Euclidean distance is just the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared, right? Where x or y1 and y2 are the y coordinate of the two points, and x2 and x1 are the x coordinate of the two points. This is going to give you your, your Euclidean distance, right? This is the equation for Euclidean distance. So these are the two key components of every single kernel density estimator. So what I want to do is I want to sort of wrap up with one last thing. Um, this is, so this explains how you calculate for a single point, but in most GIS applications, Right, you're going to be calculating it. You're going to be doing this in the in the effort to calculate the distribution over a continuous area, right? And so another thing to consider, right, in a GIS application, right, you need to consider what I'm going to call grid size. Right. So what I mean by grid size right, is if we're going to calculate a continuous surface, how far apart do we want those estimates to be? And so you can think about it, for example, in, in ArcGIS Pro, right? what will happen is it's going to create a raster. It's going to create a raster and it's going to calculate right KDE for the center of this raster cell relative to whatever data you have it's going to calculate the KDE for the center of this raster cell it's going to calculate the KDE for the center of this raster cell right and so when you're doing this inside of a GIS application you really need to consider well how big do I want these cells to be right Right. How big do I want these cells to be? How far apart? Put another way, how far apart do I want these points to be? Right. So grid size, right? how far apart do I want my estimates To be. Now, I'm not going to um, necessarily go through how you would figure this out because it's going to be pretty context specific. But again, just keep in mind, especially in GIS applications where things tend to run by default if you're not careful, right, that you really do want to consider 
you know, how, how much distance do I want between these points when I'm calculating the kernel density? Do I want there to be kilometers of space between them? Do I want there to be meters of space between them? Does it matter? Those are the kinds of questions specifically in a GIS application that you kind of need to, to keep in your mind. In addition to the radius that you pick, also, you know, how much space am I giving myself between the points? So hopefully this made sense. I know there's there's a lot of stuff here. Um, in the next video, we're going to go through a conceptual sort of example application with a specific type of kernel. So hopefully this made sense. And as always, please reach out. Thank you.